Hello everyone, New Life here, and I've been talking a lot in within the community about Dishonored. And there's a lot of speculation about, well, what if the outsider wants to die? And this is my personal speculation on the topic, which I have thought a lot about, as I always do when it comes to Dishonored theories. So we know that Delilah was a part of the outsider, right? So could if it have been true that she also shared a few emotions and thoughts with the outsider, i.e. a link between them, that which Delilah, at least, didn't know about. For example, why did Delilah have to go to Dunwall if creating a painting to change the world was her original plan? Or even becoming the next outsider, for that matter. She could have done all of that without needing to get Corvo or Emily involved at all. But what if the reason she was so reverted to a child-minded date, i.e. a childlike temper, is because the outsider himself was thinking about asking Corvo slash Emily, originally Corvo, for help. But, I mean, honestly, his character is too prideful to straight up ask for help, so what if the entire Delilah going to Dunwall deal was more of the outsider's plan to seek aid, but propose it as a way for them to reclaim their throne. Also, it'd be wise to note that Corvo might have not helped the outsider if the outsider came knocking for help, as he wouldn't have needed to get involved with the outsider's affairs in the first place. I Corvo's deal was settled back when he rescued his daughter from the Loyalist 15 years ago. More or less, he was done with the outsider's deal, i.e. communication from the moment he rescued Emily. Took note on him, the outsider never bothered Corvo that entire time, nor would he without reason. And he didn't have a reason. After all, the outsider still might have a shade of that 15 year old mentality of, uh, he might have said no, so, you know, I gotta deal with this. To expand on this note, he even mentions to Corvo if you play as Corvo, uh, just before Dugabel's mansion that. Dear Corvo, would you even have lifted a finger? put Emily in harm's way. Be honest now. He could slightly be referencing how more than likely Corvo would have said no if the outsider asked for his aid uh, up front. There's also the bad question of why didn't he seek out help the moment Delilah became a part of him? Well, from the timeline of Dishonored, it was three years that she came back before taking the throne, and probably a few more before that, i.e. getting the cult together while she was still in the void. And if you take into account the way time flows in the void is different than real world time, i.e. Delilah was in the void for 12 years, but she only aged three during that time, only after resuming aging after she returned to the mortal world. Don't quote me on that, I'm not quite sure. In Dishonored 2, Delilah appears almost as she did as the Knife of Dawnwall and the Brigmore Witches, only having aged three years from the first game to the second. This is because while 12 years pass in the world, the Void has no concept of time. And this is uh, a quote from the Dishonored wiki. And by doing this, this would have kept Delilah distracted long enough for Emily and Corvo to, in essence, help the outsider by getting rid of Delilah from remaining a part of him, i.e. killing Delilah's cannon, for example. Another note to add is the outsider was killed when he was 15 years old, as I mentioned prior, and because of this effect, it could have reverted Delilah's mind to that age, or younger, when the main source of trauma happened, making it a part of her main and only focus for a long, short while. Just long enough for an outsider to get help from Emily and Corvo, he wouldn't have literally dragged Emily and Corvo into the void during cracking the slab if he simply wanted Delilah to win, or given the player a step-by-step -step instruction manual on how to return Delilah's soul back into her body so that she could be made mortal to make it possible to kill her entirely. And being bound to the void and seeing as Delilah hit her soul in the physical world made it so the outsider's ability was limited to what he could actually do himself with these tasks. He even says on the void, Delilah is part of me now. She tore out a piece of herself and hid it away, inside a thing made of bones. If you want to kill Delilah, you're going to have to find her spirit and give it back to her. Reaching it won't be easy, but what comes after that might be the hardest thing you will ever have to do. It is something that he's never expressed, which is uh, emotion. He was very, very um, tightly nitpicked about his emotions, and he didn't want to express them if we, we didn't even know if he had them. But he wanted help. He wanted to get rid of her. Perhaps Delilah getting involved in Dunwall was the outsider's I idea entirely, rather than Delilah's, making Delilah's pettiness more of an engrossed emotion uh, effect from being connected to the outsider and the void itself. So the outsider, in my opinion, used the connection 
between himself and Delilah to seek aid from Corvo slash Emily, i.e. his favorites, let's be honest here, to know I think the outsider's original intention was to ask Corvo for help, which is why Delilah encased him in stone to stop him. Which is canon, which perhaps is also the same reason why Delilah didn't encase both of them in stone, is that be the outsider even stopped the thought from ever occurring in Delilah's mind, in essence saving one of them to retain the ability to help the outsider to get rid of Delilah. Whew, that was a mouthful. Oh, and P.S. I kind of feel like the outsider has a more of a bring it on Dowd to Dowd's plan to kill him. Bring it on. Almost like a game he's eager to play. You know, like a 15 year old's boy. Uh, PSS, did we ever find out what Delilah's secret was? At the Dunwall Shrine, when returning to Dunwall, the outsider says, But now she's got a secret as well. We, the player, assume it's the painting, but that was part of her original plan, is to take over the world. We overhear some witches and everything, but maybe it was just all the clones you have to fight to get to her. Yeah, that, that's, that's probably it. Although I swear if they bring her back, I am having issues. I am having issues. What's dead should stay dead. But remember to take my theories with a grain of salt, as I could be wrong in every aspect. This has been New Life 586, The King Studio, signing out, guys. Bye! P.S. What I'm not saying is the outsider hatched the super elaborate plan to intentionally put Emily and Corvo in danger so it'd force one of them directly to help the outsider while helping themselves. He may have just wanted to ask them for help, but Delilah took that plan into account and things went awry and gave the thought of saving one of them to help one of them. He might be neutral, but he wasn't about to let Delilah win. And sending Delilah to Dunwall would have caused some sort of chaos. Just enough to help the outsider get rid of her in retrospect, that does sound a little devious. But I mean, honestly, the outsider is more playful than anything. And personally, I can kind of relate the outsider to being compared to an author. He's kind of writing his own piece and holding a lot of information back on revealing it when it comes fit, relevant, and if they earn the information to reveal. So there's that. And uh, but honestly, I, I feel that that's accurate. So uh, yeah. Side note aside, bye guys!